Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. And today we are back with another Cricut project. So today I'm actually going to show you how to take Cricut Smart Paper and Cricut Iron On Holographic Iron On and make these adorable drink stirs. So I actually was setting a tablescape in my other room and I needed just a little something extra. I didn't have a centerpiece or really a lot going on on the table other than the salad and dinner plates that I loved. And so instead of rushing to the store to buy something, I figured why buy something when you can make something. So I whipped these little babies up, they're little mermaid tails. They took me an hour, about an hour to make them from design file to cutting them out to putting them together. And this was a mermaid tail that I found on Cricut Access. So I didn't actually make the file, but I just grabbed it from the library, which makes it super quick, easy, and I whipped these up. I will show you close-ups. I will show you how to make them. I kind of love them. I now want to make drink stirs for every single tablescape ever. So if you want to learn how to make these, Let's get started. All right, y'all, voiceover Betsy here, and we are going to pop into the Cricut Access Library. And as you can see, I've typed mermaid in the search bar. So now I'm just gonna go around. I really like this one, but I'm just gonna browse through, see if there's any other mermaid tails or shapes that I really like. But I think that is the winner. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it and hit customize because I don't want to make the whole project. I just want to grab that shape that I'm going to use for my drink stirrer. All right, so I hit customize and it's going to open this up in a new canvas with all of the cut files for this particular project that's called the Mermaid Adventure. From here, I'm just gonna select the shape that I liked, that mermaid tail, and I'm going to copy it from that canvas and I'm going to start a new project. Then I'll paste that shape onto my new canvas. Perfect. Now we're going to edit this a little bit because I wanna make sure that it is the right size and shape for my project instead of the original project. So I definitely want mine to be about two or three inches tall no more than three inches. Ideally two, but since it's a long skinny shape, we're going to go with three. It'll just come a little bit further down our drink stir. Then I'm going to go ahead and change the files just a little bit. This particular one was built with an overlay that has cutouts over a, um, a solid layer. Instead of that, I want two solid layers for my sticker paper, and then I want the scales to be the top layer. So I just selected those two, copied the middle one, pasted it, and then sliced the scales out of the pasted middle layer. That gives me my back layer, my middle layer, and the scales for the top layer. Perfect. I'm gonna paste those scales that I sliced out and move them up. Of course, you could just cut out the holographic as a solid layer and then do slices out of your sticker paper, but I decided this would be easier. I can just add my holographic iron on to the very top layer. That's what I want to be really shiny. So now I'm just going to change everything to the colors of my particular paper. There wasn't an aqua, so I picked blue, and then I picked purple to represent the holographic foil. Perfect. Now I'm going to copy everything and duplicate it. Perfect, I'm going to flip it over so that I have a mermaid tail for both sides of my drink stirrer. Now I'm going to take both pieces and resize them down to that three inch size I had originally picked. Perfect, now I do need a few of these one set will only make me one drink stirrer. And while you can copy and paste those, I just click make it and we're using smart materials. So I click without mat. And now up at the top where it says project copies, I'm just going to adjust that. So first I'm going to try four because I have four place settings on my tablescape. 
but I can cut more than that on my sheet here. So I'm going to go ahead and make six. That'll give me a couple extra if I need them. Perfect. I'm going to go through and just double check all my layers and then I will hit next. Everything looks good. So we are okay to continue. Now we are going to actually start cutting. So I'm going to connect my Cricut Maker 3, which is what I'm using. And I'm going to do my first layer, the white layer out of white smart paper sticker cardstock. So here are all my materials and my Cricut Maker 3. I'm going to start moving those aside, open this baby up, and turn it on. Here's the white smart sticker paper cardstock. That is a mouthful. Basically, it's cardstock that's sticky like a sticker. It's basically white sticker cardstock, but it's smart, so you don't have to use a cutting mat. All the things. It's all the things. <laughs> it's also wrapped in cellophane. So I'm going to take that off. And of course I am a uh, really good at taking this off. Slice down the side, but that obviously wasn't enough. So we'll slice across the front as well. Taking all the wrapper off. Perfect. Now we only need one sheet. I'm just going to kind of look at it for a second because this is the first time I'm using this. I've seen it in action and it looks amazing. I won't have to use my little sticker machine. Now I'm going to go ahead and feed this into my machine. Perfect. When you use smart materials like this sticker cardstock, it pulls the machine in and you can see on my screen recording that it says it's measuring the material. So since you can cut on a roll, it's just going to make sure you have enough material to actually complete the cut, which is genius. Then I'm going to hit go and it is going to cut out both rows of my little mermaid tails. It's actually very fast. This is real time right here. So like you can see how quickly it is cutting each of those pieces out. It's kind of ridiculous. The other thing that I've noticed about the new cutting machine here, the Cricut Maker 3, is that my little progress bar on my screen of my computer says it's at 100% way before the cut is actually finished. I just leave it alone and as soon as the cut is actually finished, it'll tell me to unload my mat. Or I guess not my mat. It'll tell me to unload my smart materials. There we go. But you saw how quickly that said it was finished. Now this is white, so you probably can't see the lines, but all of those mermaid tails are cut out. So now we are going to move on to the second layer, which is our aqua mermaid tails slightly smaller than the white ones so that they'll fit on top. We are once again going to slice off that cellophane wrapper here. Hopefully a little better than the first time. <laughs> All right, we're going to select that smart paper sticker cardstock once again for layer two, and then we are going to load it into the machine. It's measuring the materials, make sure we have enough. Of course we do because we're using a whole sheet, but the part that I slice off of this, I can use for another project as a smart material. Just feed it in and it'll tell me if I have enough. Now it's going to start to cut. Once again, these larger shapes cut really fast. So I left this in real time so you can see the speed of the machine. Although according to my screen recording, I'm finished cutting. And as you can see, the Cricut is probably on its second or third cut. That is so strange. Every other Cricut machine I've ever owned has been pretty on point with the amount of time it takes to cut and the little progress wheel on your actual screen. So this is a new experience. Leave a comment down below if your Cricut Maker 3 or your Explore Air 3 does this as well. Surely it's not just me. All right, so now we're finished and it tells me to unload my mat or my smart material. I'm going to keep saying that. 
This is a little easier to see, but still not that easy. Now I'm going to use the lines and attach my smart roll holder. This is the best thing ever. It lets me take my smart iron on, which is an entire roll of holographic iron on and load it directly into my machine. Look at that holographic foil. So with iron on, of course, we want to make sure we add it in with the shiny side down and the carrier sheet backwards facing up. When you're using a roll like this, it's really easy because you're obviously going to feed it into your machine via the roll. Then hit load. Of course, Cricut will remind you that if you're using iron on, you need to make sure your piece is mirrored. So hit mirror and then hit done. And if you don't remember right here, it reminds you. Then you're going to select that holographic iron on and load it into your machine. Perfect. See that iron on start to come out. That was it measuring and making sure I have enough material on the roll to complete my cut. This is a brand new roll. So of course I have more than enough, but still it's the principle of the matter. All right. Now this cut takes quite a bit longer because we're actually cutting out all of those tiny scales. This is not real time. This is actually 800% speed. So watch that baby work. <laughs> Definitely the longest cut by far. All right, so once the cut is finished, before you unload, don't forget to slice straight across your material, and then you can remove the entire roll holder and the roll of vinyl. That will leave your material right here, and you can unload it, and it's ready to roll. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and put our Maker 3 away, readjust our workspace, Check out all those cuts. They look fabulous. Readjust, perfect. And now we are going to start weeding. So I'm gonna grab my weeding tool and I'm just going to find the corner. This is always the hardest and start to peel back the iron on. These scales are really tiny. So go slow and you want to pull straight back. And every time I go over the scales, I'm just using my finger to make sure that they are not coming up, that they're stuck down and staying in place on the carrier sheet. For the most part, I didn't have any problems with the scales trying to come up, but it's always best just to be watchful. Perfect. Let's put those out of the way. And now we can get started on the next part of the project. So I'm going to start off by grabbing my Cricut um, paper slicer tool and I'm just going to slice off the bottom of each of those smart sheets of sticker paper so that I can put the unused portions away and save them for another project. This is not necessary. I mean, you can just use scissors, but I like that it makes straight cuts and it's, it's an easy way to get the job done. If you don't have one, I use it all the time. Perfect. Let's do the same thing with our white piece for the larger mermaid tails. You can see I'm also going to turn on my mini easy press. That way when we get to the part of putting our holographic iron on on our scales, we're good to go. Let that baby heat up while we're doing all this tedious work. All right, now we can put our slicer away. We are done slicing it up and let's take a look. So these pieces are all we need white sticker paper aqua sticker paper and our holographic scales perfect so i'm just making sure that everything kind of lines up seeing how it goes together and then i'm going to slice a few of these apart so that i can put one of them together and see how the easiest way to do it is i think i'm gonna have to slice all of them apart 
perfect. Make sure not to slice anything that you don't want to, <laughs> one at a time. Now I'm going to go ahead and take an aqua tail and they should just come up like stickers. Perfect, they did. And I'm going to put it down on one of the white mermaid's tails, mermaid tails, making sure that it's centered. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these apart that way, when I go to heat them up with my easy press, I only have to heat up one at a time. Since these are also right and left tails for either side of our drink stir, cutting them apart will just make it a little easier to assemble them. Uh-oh, got it stuck on that carrier sheet. Let's move that out of the way. Perfect. All right. Now, if you didn't know you can put iron on on cardstock, you definitely can. But I found that it's a little easier to do it a little differently than normal. So first, I'm just going to line up that holographic iron on right on my cardstock. Perfect. And now move that mat. Oops. Don't knock over your easy press. It's on the mat. It's fine. It's all fine. Okay. So now everything's lined up and I'm going to go ahead and press it. I'm trying to figure out at this point exactly what the best way to do it is. But as I keep going, I learn that it's easiest to start by putting your easy press on the front side, holding it in place for 10 seconds, flipping it over, heating it from the back from 10 seconds. And then you'll see here it's hot. Oops, there's the top of my head. Okay, so now instead of trying to peel it straight up, I grab my weeding tool and I use that metal part of the weeding tool just as a kind of a brayer. I'm going to really press down all those iron-on scales. And for some reason, that's really the trick here. It really makes them stick. Perfect. One down, 85 million to go. All right, so now I'm just making sure that I have one for the other side because I want to do an entire drink stir before I move on to doing the rest. Make sure I've got it down. So I'm going to go ahead and put the second one together, and I've kind of got it down now. I'm still fine-tuning my approach. Oh, and my little puppy has come to sit with us. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead, add another aqua tail to the white one. You can see it really does just peel up right like a sticker here. Although that little tiny part right under the base of the fin is very thin. So watch that. Perfect. I find that if you line it up at the base and then follow it up through that little skinny section, you can get the fin lined up perfectly. Once you do one or two, you'll learn how to do it. The rest are super easy. The first one's always the hardest. All right, line it up the second way. You want those thin pieces to be in line and then the scales to go on the right side or the left side, whichever the bigger portion of the fin is on the bottom. Perfect. That carrier sheet is sticky but you can pick it up and move it around a little bit until you really stick it down. There we go. This time I'm gonna try doing it on my desk. Now I wouldn't suggest doing that unless your desk is protected. Mine has a really heavy piece of plexiglass, so I can heat smaller things on it for a short amount of time. I wouldn't do it for too long or you'll still warp the plexiglass. Perfect. So I do about 10 seconds. I'm trying to press it down with the tip here, but like I said, once I really get going, I found that the easiest way to do it was 10 seconds flat on the front and then flipping it over, doing 10 seconds on the back and then pressing it down really good with that weeding tool. Something about it, I'm telling you, makes all the difference. Perfect. Now we should be able to peel that carrier sheet off. 
Yep, and everything stays put. Perfect. Now, if I'd done the back, I wouldn't have had to heat the front for so long. Now that I've got two, I'm actually using some wooden skewers. I guess they're for kebabs as my drink stir sticks. For my drinks, they're big enough and they stir just fine, but you can use a base as wh whatever you like. I'm going to go ahead and peel both sides up like a big sticker. Perfect. Just being very careful because I do not want to break anything at this point. Again, you get more confident as you go along. I'm going to start by laying one down and then adding my kebab right to the center of the bottom of the tail. Perfect. And this is definitely the hardest part, which is lining the two tails up so that they look like one tail. Oh, I took my stick off. Y'all, what was I doing? Probably just didn't get it in the right place. There we go. I'm going to start by lining the fins up and that's easiest if you can see both sections of the fin at the same time. Just go slow, line it up before you press them down because once you press these pieces together, that sticker card stock is sticky and they are not letting go. Perfect. Now we're going to press it down all the way down the fin onto our wooden skewer. Perfect. I was worried that they were going to come off, but really, I mean, look at this. So good. It's so good. All right. Ready to make a couple more? By a couple more, I mean five more, as I apparently need a set of six. I really wish I had made eight. Maybe I'll whip two more up. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up now to make the other five. You get the idea. So we're going to go ahead and batch things, and hopefully I don't put my head in the entire video. So first I'm going to just go ahead and add all of the aqua mermaid tails to the white ones. Perfect. I don't know about y'all, but I definitely use my weeding tool as like an extension of my fingers, tiny metal extension of my fingers. Remember once you put that sticker paper down, it's down. I haven't tried to take it back up, but I don't think it would work well. If you have tried it, tell me down below because I feel like it would be very stuck. All right, last aqua tail going down, and then we'll move on to the holographic iron on. Let's cut all these apart so that we can line them up and work with them easily. And I did try when I was cutting these apart to leave the carrier sheet as large as I could on either side of the tail. That way it would protect my sticker paper from the easy press. But I found that it wasn't very necessary. Even the parts of the sticker paper that were directly heated by the easy press really didn't have any problems. All right. 10 seconds on this side, 10 seconds on the other side, and then press it down. I did try to use a scraper tool instead of my weeder, and you can see it just doesn't work properly. 
All right, I'm gonna make two piles, one for left tails, one for right tails. That way I can assemble them without having to sort through everything. Plexiglass is starting to get a little hot. I better work on my cutting mat, my heat mat a little bit more. Now that I've got it down to science with the back and the front and heating everything evenly, I don't really need to do it on the plexiglass as much. I thought doing it on a hard surface would be better, but it's not really necessary. There we go. Keep on trucking. Now that we've got everything set up, ironed on, pressed together, let's go ahead and put these babies together one at a time onto their little skewers so we can have a whole set of drinks. Drink kebabs, drink stirrers. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, got to take a picture.
All right, y'all, at this point, you can completely be done, but I really wanted to make sure mine were extra steady, extra stable, extra strong, since I want to use them a couple different times. Um, so I'm just going to take a little bit of UV resin here. I'm going to put it on either side of the mermaid tail right along that uh, wooden kebab. And then I'm going to use a spare kebab to spread it out, make sure it's really even along that stick. Perfect. And then I'm just going to put it under my little UV light. And it really makes everything super stable. While the light is really drying everything, I'm just using that extra kebab, the other end, to hold everything straight. This is definitely an unnecessary step, but I did find that it made everything so much stronger. And since the UV resin is up at the top and not down by your drink, it should be perfectly safe even if this UV resin wasn't food safe, which this one is after it's cured, as long as you don't add any colorants or pigments to it, which we aren't. We're adding clear resin, UV resin, and we are not putting anything else in it. So it's 100% food safe. We can go ahead and do this to each of my little skewers and then we're done. All right, y'all, told you that was quick and easy. I hope you guys liked these. I hope you are inspired to go try these. Even if maybe the whole mermaid thing isn't your vibe, we are coming up on fall, acorns, foxes. How cute would foxes be? There are so many ideas for these. Now you'll see at the end there that I did add some UV resin in between the popsicle sticks to just keep everything straight and sturdy. And that's because I really liked these and I want to be able to use them more than once. Um, I think they would hold up more than fine without the UV resin for a couple of uses. Um, I just thought it was an added strength since my specific piece didn't touch the stick all the way around. So if you want to try that, I just grabbed the UV resin and popped it in there. It's really quick and easy. Once it's cured, it's totally food safe. Even though it is up here, it's never going to touch your drink. So I hope you guys liked these and I will see you in the next Cricut video. Bye.